in the name of Jesus we thank you oh God we declare mandates we declare assignment we declare a stirring in the name of Jesus Christ so do it Lord the praise and the glory of your name in Jesus name we pray amen and everyone said amen 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 hallelujah God has opened a door in front of you God has opened a door in front of you there is an open door there's an open door in front of you God has opened a door in front of you this is the word of the Lord I have opened a door before you I release the things that are hard around you I'm loosening the grip of the things that have held you so long right now in the name of Jesus Christ do you have faith can you receive this word I'm breaking the chains this morning I'm unlocking the hard things this day in the name of Jesus Christ by the finger of God God was telling me that he's crushing the sinful habits in the lives of people today in the name of Jesus Christ God is raising a people for himself today in the name of Jesus Christ God is freeing the captives and everyone who believes this should say, Amen. Amen. God has opened the door in front of you. Open the door in front of you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to Ecclesia Hills. Um, what God wants to do is literally to just keep that door open for you. I know that many of us, we're used to there is actually the land helplessness. It's called land helplessness. Where you're used to where you used to be. And that thing, you want to go, you can't go. So you're more used to not being able to go and being able to go into what God wants you to go into. So I call it learned helplessness. You learned how to be helpless. And you are so familiar with that helplessness. But that's not all that God has in store for you. If God is your maker, then he has more than adversity for you. Adversity in itself is not the end of the journey for you. The difficulty is not the end of the road. That's not all that God has in store for you. He has more than that adversity for you. If you believe it, say amen. And all this week, God was speaking over me and saying to me, I want my children to fly. I want to release sons and daughters like arrows to the middle of the earth. I want to set people free. And it, uh, how, like last week, we had such a w wonderful conference. And, and even right now, the conference is still ongoing. Tomorrow, I'm going to Abuja to join the last two days of the conference. But can I tell you guys something? In everything, all God wants to do is to set you free to fly. What does everyone want to do? chain you, imprison you, make you think it's impossible, make you think you're exaggerating, make you think like all these things about God is just too much God, God, God. And, and when he does this reductionism in your eyes, after a while you begin to believe it. And when you begin to believe it, you begin to lose your graces, you begin to lose your anointing, you begin to lose your power to prophesy, you begin to lose the dreams that you used to see that were godly, you begin to lose every single gift that God gave to you. And how does the devil do it? Learn just brings you to learned helplessness. Learn it. Like these things of God don't really work. Don't go too deep. Don't go too far. Let's start from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. This is Paul speaking. <laughs> a great door is open to me a great opportunity has come to me to be the man god has called me to be but what comes along with that great door adversity adversaries people who think you're not good enough situations that think that you're not good enough things that make you feel little things that judge you and pull you down in the middle of the door that has opened but in God's mind, there is a place for you. That's why we had that topic. How do you deal with adversity? Because adversity is the opposite of open doors. Do you understand? Adversity is the opposite of possibilities. 
So when you deal with it, so we have had like a robust conversation on dealing with adversity. But let me tell you the other side now. Open doors. Say amen. Open doors. Open doors. Why do, is there adversity? Because no land is taken without warfare. There's no free land anywhere. How many of you have gone to your village and they gave you free land? No free land. Once it has to do with land, warfare will begin. Once it has to do with business, warfare will start. Once it has to do with improvement, warfare will begin. Once it has to do with a degree, warfare will begin. Once it has to do with progress, warfare will begin. Why? Because no land is taken without warfare. You cannot occupy new territories casually. You have to have a militant disposition to take on the new things God wants to give to you. You have to have a warring disposition. And that's why so somebody, somebody asked me once, Pastor Mo, must I fight? What if I don't like fighting? Do you, do you understand what that means? Think about that child who gets beat in school all the time. You know what bullies enjoy? The fact that they, the timid boy will never revenge. Do you guys understand this? The devil is a bully. He actually has no real power. The day you wake up, that's the day he backs off. So the devil loves people who cannot wake up. So he keeps on beating them black and blue and giving them defeat as a way of life. And when they want to stand up, he says, no, it's not possible. He loves it. He loves men who are so big, but powerless in the spirit. He loves men who, who like some <clears throat> guys... Guys will hang out, and the thing among guys is who is the toughest, and they'll all be acting tough. So who cannot show their emotions, and they'll all be acting, they can't show their emotions. But that's not toughness. In fact, that's pretentious toughness. Because if you are really tough, you should be able to deal with everything, including the emotional part of you. Do you understand? A, a strong man is able to cry. You know I can cry. Not before men, in, before God. And if you cry before God, you don't need to cry before men. Many of you cry before men. Sometimes men don't even pity you. When, they, when you start crying, they say, you ugly cry. Cry before God. Because no land can be taken without adversity. A great door has been opened to me. But there are many adversaries. Opportunities are bound to me. But there are many people who say I cannot do it. God has said I can do it. But there are people standing in my way saying it's impossible for you to do it. So what do you do? Do you agree with the people who are saying you can't do it? Or do you jump into God? Do you labor in God? So this morning, I want you to lay your hand on your chest one more time. Let's pray. Kanoshte kaba hari kote masuka nenka shali bradosta. That partnership between my spirit and your spirit that births new things. That connection between my heart and your heart that brings about new birthings. That that connection to heaven that brings the releases the grace of God. I declare it upon myself. I declare that life upon myself. The life of God. The grace of God the power of divine life I declare it upon myself I have the ability to birth even though a door has been opened I know that there are many adversaries I seize these adversaries in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I break their walls down I break their strategies down in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that I have capacity on the inside of me I have enablement on the inside of me I can't give birth I can give birth by the Spirit of God. I can birth the plans of God. I can birth the purposes of God. I can birth the divine life of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I can birth it. I can birth it by the grace of God. So help me, Lord God, according to this door that you've opened. Yes, Lord God, I speak life over myself. Life over myself. In the name of Jesus Christ, say amen. amen. Say amen again. Next slide. So we're going to talk about a few doors, doors of the spirit, 
the privilege of ministry, calling to enterprise, and your assignment in the nation. And now we'll close out with the church at this, this, this Philadelphia. There is a move. Next slide. There is a move. There, this is the seasons of open doors in the spirit. Men and women are soaring. People are learning God's ways. This is the time when people are climbing to previously unattainable anointing. This is a time when people are rising up in prayer. If you're not among the people, just know that you are the one who is not among. Many people are rising. <laughs> you know, people come and say, there's no money in Lagos. I'm looking at them like, you don't know what you're talking. You don't know what you're talking. Like we say, there's no money in Lagos. Like you don't know what you're talking. You don't know. Houses in Nikoya are selling for 400 million. People are buying it full paid cash. You're just not among. <laughs> There's no lack of power in the spirit. You just, you just decide whether you want to be among or not. Like, I'm among. I'm among. <laughs> this is the time of the move of God. This is the time of the move of God. This is the time when grace is being released. This is the time when so, so many people are pressing into God. The Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. There is a militancy in your disposition that will enable you to enter the kingdom. There's a power. You, we heard that the open door is there. So how come the door is not automatic? No, it's not automatic. It's not automatic. Even though it's an open door, but it's not, an, it's not a come one, come all kind of door. Narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. Even though it's an open door, but narrow is still the open doorway. You have to decide that you want that door. Do you want it? Do you want it? Answer yes or no. If you say yes, it's going to take something from you. Guys, let's get into God's door. Is that door open right now? Season when, before you lift up your hands, God is hearing you. Before you fall on your knees, the atmosphere is changing. Even right now, the Holy Spirit is moving in this hall for anyone who will jump into the place where God is. God wants to give us new tongues. Maybe you've been praying a long, long time and your tongues is the same all the time. Bow tie, bow tie, untie my bow tie. Bow tie, bow tie, untie my bow tie. Suzuki Kawasaki, Suzuki Kawasaki. How about you pray? How about you trust God for new tongues? How about you trust God for new tongues? Even right now, in the ordinary, you see, there's no other service. You see, we, 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 I preach first. When you came this morning, I started preaching. Now we preach, we worship. And after we worship, we prayed. And after we prayed, we shared. And after we shared, I preach again. And then we prayed again. What are we trying to do? We're trying to mess with your mind. No, not really. We're, we're trying to say that we're actually here for God and nothing matters about that process. What is so holy about item one, item two, item three? Tell me, what, why is it holy? Why do you hold on to it as a process of service? When you left your house, were you not looking for God? And God is saying, I'm here to meet with you. Why do you think prayer is something we'll do to start the service? So many of you cut it out. Let's cut out worship and prayer. So now I'll be preaching in the morning before and then do worship last. You understand all of it is actually designed to bring you into God. Everything we do is not, it's not one is not opening for the other. One is not sequence for the other. No. But everything we do when we gather together is designed to what? Bring you into God. Why? Because God is moving. And this is the center for divine activity. Say amen. This is the pillar and ground of truth. The church is the place where God is releasing his voice and declaring his power and enabling people and breaking the chains and breaking the yoke that binds people and, and removing the cobwebs that fills people's minds. Why? He wants to bring his people into himself. He wants voices and prayers. He wants new tongues. He wants new tongues. Who desires to pray new tongues? He wants people who are going to climb into
into new anointings. He wants people who are going to step into new graces. We're going to be anointed fresh. We're going to be saying, God, give me new oil. Give me new fire. Give me new life. That's what I desire in the name of Jesus Christ. Give me new life. Give me new power. Give me freshness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh my God. You guys are not replying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wake up your spirit. Wake up your spirit. Makushe la ranosta. Mankuse na malibri atomo. I see people learning God's ways. I see people soaring in the spirit. I see men and women climbing up holy mountains. Open your eyes in the spirit and see it. See it. See men. See women stepping up to God's mountain, stepping to the place where God lives. I see people living lower lands and going uphill in the mountains of God. I see someone pressing into God this morning. Hallelujah. Isaiah 44 verse 3. For I will pour out water on, on the thirsty land and currents on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. I will pour out my spirit on your children. Yes, and my blessing on your offspring. Yes, the people who live after you will carry the deposit of the spirit of God on the inside of you. Even though the ground is dry right now, even though the land is thirsty right now, I'm going to cause the rivers to flow on dry land. I'm going to cause the rivers to flow on dry wilderness. Close your eyes for a minute and imagine yourself going through the wilderness where there is dryness and arid sand and dust and all of a sudden you hear the sound of abundance of water and the rivers that's coming your way and a freshness that's coming your way and the grace of God starts coming your way because it's the promise of God there's an outpouring the open door the first open door is the open door of the spirit the first open door is the open door of the spirit next slide the first open door is the open door of the spirit and there will be worship with new songs and atmosphere and people are going to pray with new tongues and have open visions there will be a word and revelation and healings there will be adventure of mandate beyond the pain beyond your adversity there will be your a clarity of your calling yes i see people one more time i see people riding high on the mountains of god i see people climbing into the destiny in god i see people climbing into spiritual things i see people unlocking unlocking doors in the spirit i see people rising up in the power of god i see i see people overcome doors in the spirit spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters Wherever you call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my say. Spirit, lead me, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Sing it one more time. Spirit, lead me. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call. Take me deeper, take me deeper that my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior.
Shika Chama Namba Libra Dosta, Ma Yenda Sayara Libra Dosta, Iliqua Shada Bosea da Bolerinda Masaya Dosta Lambosa, Ne Masaya Timba Salebra Nostea, Ne Masheka Tosila Raya da Bosena Moshila, Barosen Tamalekra. Open door, open door. I've opened the door for you in the spirit. Come in, says the spirit of God. Step into the spirit. Step into the spirit. Forget about the time. Step into the spirit for a moment. Step in, step in, guys. Oh. living here in 10 minutes when they arrived they gathered the church together and reported all that god had done through them and how he opened the door of faith to the gentiles how he opened the door of faith to the gentiles when they arrived they gathered the church together and began to report what god has done through them what god has done through them that's the next thing what god will do through you an open door of ministry. God has called some people here to start new groups, to start new fellowships, to start new ministries. You know, God, when I was coming back to Nigeria in 2017, I asked God, what are you doing? What are you going? And he gave me a vision. The vision he gave me was like a, pla a, 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 a flower trough. You know, this flower nursery where they plant so many small, small flowers. And I saw many, many tiny, tiny flowers springing up, like, like many of them. And it was like all small, small tender plants. And I asked God, what is this? And he said, it's a thousand sprouts. What he's doing next is a thousand sprouts. A lot of small meetings, a lot of fellowships, a lot of gatherings, a lot of small, small groups. You don't have to hide your small group. You don't have to do it secretly. Open it up for other people to join. Open up your, don't fear that people will take over your ministry. That is actually born out of the old, out of the old order. God is showing me that a lot more fellowships will start. A lot more people will meet together in homes. A lot more people will begin to declare the word of God in private places, in offices, in business places. I see like a thousand plants growing. And when you look at the land very soon, everywhere will be green. Why? Because it was sprouting everywhere. So don't worry about whether what God is giving you is a church or whether you're becoming a pastor. You're not becoming a pastor necessarily. You're just being sent by God to do something unique. Say unique. This is a time for open doors of ministry. And this is a time when God is causing the fathers who will understand how to encourage people to do their call. This is not a time for pastors like me to sit down and anyone who is starting something, I will now stand on their head and say, no, you are not ready. You are not. No, this is not that time. This is a time they will make mistakes. There will be mistakes. But guess what? Allow people. Allow people. This is a time for fathers who will water and encourage. And if you want to start a fellowship, come and meet me. Ask Ask me for a keyboardist. Ask me for a worship leader. I'll send someone who will help you out. Yes, ask me. Invite me to come there. I'm not coming to steal your members. I will come to encourage them. Can I tell you guys something? There's so much fear in ministry, but God is actually breaking down that fear. He wants to wash away past pain and hurts and wrong ministry. And wrong ministry is when the man of God can only see himself. God is breaking down that wall today in the name of Jesus Christ. And he's raising trusting fellowships, trusting places 
places where his children will be gathered. Because think about it, if only one man will stand on Sunday and preach, then their message will be limited. But look at your small groups and how people spoke in that group. How imagine if that group was in your house. Imagine if this was a group of your friends. How real it will be. How you can take the word of God into places where you can chew it. But the problem is that can you trust that somebody is not jealous of even the little success that you're having? Somebody's not jealous of your car, you know your house, see your TV. Small, small, petty things. That's why I don't own anything in this world. I have nothing. You know, my door is always open. People come to my house, the keys outside. There's nothing to steal. I don't even own a TV. I don't have a TV. There's nothing to steal. What are you going to steal in my house? The table? Dining table? You die of weight now to carry it. How are you going to carry it? I have nothing so valuable that I cannot let go of. It's nothing so valuable. Can I tell you guys something? We put so much value on earth. As a result, we cannot do our ministry. But now, God is opening to you a door of ministry. <laughs> this one is for someone. God is opening for you a door of ministry. God is opening for you a door for you to stand before people. Of all the jobs in the world to do, what is the most important job? And you serve God. Serving God is way more important than working for the best corporation in the world. There was a time when the best corporation in the world to work for was a company called Enron. Where's Enron today? It doesn't exist anymore. Can I tell you something? When you work for God, the tenure never ends. The tenure never ends. And God doesn't dispose people like we think. That's why you see old men of God who have even missed their way. God is managing them patch patch. He's doing patch patch with them. He doesn't throw them away. God doesn't junk the people who serve him when they were young. He doesn't. He, he, some of you are waiting for Yedekwa to die. He won't die. He won't die. He will live. He served God for a long time. You know how many people knew God because of that man? Many of you are waiting for one big daddy or whatever to die. He's not going to die. He's going to live. He's going to live out his days. Let's not even get into this whole thing of waiting for a man of God for something bad to happen to them. No, they're not going away. We're going to have new fathers who will raise children. We're going to have new people who are going to understand God. We're going to have growth in the kingdom of God. We're going to have oneness. Every one of us will find our place. There will be a sense of the people who know God in this time will stepping into what God has in store. There will be a sense of open eyes before you and you receive enablement and power to do ministry God will open nations to you the door to countries will be open to you and you will travel to new lands to declare the word of God you travel to new territories to speak the counsel of God this is the day when God is opening the door of ministry behold I have set before you an open door. Say amen. God wants you to be his ambassador. He pays very well. God pays the best. You know, people look at me and sometimes they're like, Pastor Mo, you know, I feel like church sometimes doesn't allow my intellectual ability to come out. So in the book launch, I brought another chapter of me. There's an intellectual Moses an argumentative Moses, a context-building Moses, an ideas-building Moses. Do you understand? I feel like sometimes when I come to church and preach that I have to hide that part because I have to be simple enough to be understood. But there are complex ideas and, and, in, and, you know, and incremental building processes and building blocks of mental psychs that men need to operate by. There are ideas and phenomenons that we can actually articulate better in an intellectual atmosphere. There are conundrums that we can uncover and ideologues that we can we can we can postulate and there are frequencies that we can step into when when intellectualism is the idea of the day some of you are like what did he just say but can i tell you something 
I enjoy intellectualism, but not as much as I enjoy people changing. Not as much as I enjoy people understanding the word of God. Not as much as I enjoy someone who was broken yesterday rise up in new power today. And nothing in this whole world changes people. Nothing in this world changes people apart from the word of God. We like many ideas. We like many things. But guess what? Nothing changes man. You cannot take hate out of the heart of a two-year-old child. You cannot. You can, you'd rather send the rocket to the moon. You cannot take jealousy out of a husband who is jealous. You cannot do it. There's only one thing that changes man. The word of God. The word of God. And when you touch this word of God, it's the most powerful thing in all the earth. And that's why I swear by the word of God. I've stopped quoting Dalai Lama. I've quote, stopped quoting Rumi. Who is Rumi? Who the heck is Rumi? I stopped quoting Mahatma Gandhi. This is nice to have, guys, but my, a core of my idea. Anyone who believes in God. Have I finished quoting um, Martin Luther Jr.? Why am I quoting men who don't know God? Quoting ideas from half-baked men. Man, my God, I stand upon the word of God. And the word of God, my final authority. There's nothing as brilliant, as beautiful as those who know their God. Who understand the context in God is the most powerful. Very soon we start comparing apple for apple. The word of God stands above any other apple. The word of God is no more apple. We're comparing other apples. The word of God is not among. God has opened before you a door of ministry. How dare you mock it? How dare you look down on the things that God has called you to be? How dare you look down on what God has used to change the world and change nations and change empires? This word of God has changed man, changed cities, changed civilization. And that's what you're called. You have the word of God in your heart. You're called to ministry. You're called to ministry. I'm here to wash away the pain of some people. Who, your father in the Lord has hurt you. Wash it with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cleanse your heart from hurt. And remove the, the anger of being used out of you. So you can be a clean vessel unto God. To do new things for God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Two more. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand. In the fruit of your body, say amen. amen. In the increase of your livestock, say amen. amen. In the produce of your land for good, say amen. amen. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your father. Say amen. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hands. Say amen. In the fruit of your body, say amen. In the increase of your livestock, say amen. The produce of your land will be for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you. For good as he rejoiced over your fathers. Amen. God is opening the door to enterprise. New businesses are beginning. New ideas and strategies are coming. God is passing down a legacy to a new generation. God is passing down a word to a new time. God is releasing life to a new people. This is the time when God is opening new business doors. If you believe it, say amen. Oh my God, the grace of God has come and the power of God has come and God will unlock, unlock that which was difficult for you in the past. You receive grace to step into it. Say amen. All around me in the last three years, God has been telling me the word, I'm passing down legacy. I'm passing down legacy. I'm passing down legacy. There are many of you, your parents are well to do, but you've removed yourself from them because of the mistakes they make. But God is saying that this is a time of transfer. He's transferring the wealth of your parents to you. He's transferring the treasures of your parents to you. You are the one to carry on the wealth of your parents. You are the one to carry on the inheritance of your parents. I didn't believe this until I started seeing my friends. There's a friend of mine. She will never in touch with her father. The host tell me, tell her to go back home. Eventually, I instigated and instigated until she traveled. She used to, her parents would be here in another part of town. 
she rent a house in another part of town. I fought her and told her to go back home. You know, we have this habit that oh, we want independence. And independence is good. But guess what? Your parents are getting old. They need someone which they can trust to hand back what they have built. And how dare you start from the ground when you can jump from off the shoulders of your parents. That's the curse that the Bible spoke about in Malachi chapter 4. I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and turn the hearts of the children to their, their fathers or else I will strike the earth with a curse. You know what that means? That means that when fathers have no children, their legacy dies with them. They are cursed. When children have no fathers, they have to stri strive harder. They are cursed too. So if you see ministry, why the devil wants to scatter pastors so that the pastor will not have a father in the Lord is so that the pastor will start all over again, digging again. And then they'll be boasting. I said from the scratch, I had nothing. I went by myself. No, it's not supposed to be so. You're supposed to jump from the shoulder of your parents. So the disagreement between millennials and their parents is actually designed to disempower the millennials. I sent her back home. And then all of a sudden, a report came her dad has been diagnosed with cancer and all of a sudden her dad became a child in her hands she started to tend her dad and i told her you see now the journey has begun and the dad has handed over almost i can give you example after example of this thing happening it's time for generational transfer it's time for transfer of wealth from the fathers to the children. And if your fathers don't have wealth, don't worry. You have a father who has all the wealth in the world. This word is still for you. How I many of you know that from this church, we have a new king in Wari Kingdom? You guys know that the king in the world, the new king of Wari is, the new Olu of Wari is from this church. He has been here for two or three years with his wife wife's the pastor in this church right and God orchestrated this the first time God said telling me was I'm bringing back sons to their inheritance his father his father was the king when his father died they took they seized the throne from him because his father was a man of God and knew his son too was a man of God after five years that king has now passed and now the kingship has come back to the rightful owner of the throne it's time for generational transfer it's time for transfer of wealth another generation it's time for the, the button to move it's time for new new things to come to people it's time for you it's time for young ladies to grow into women it's time for boys to grow into men it's we're no more sorting out content we're no more happy just sorting out ourselves we want to take on the city we want to take on people we want to take on systems. We want to rebuild companies. It's not just about sorting out. You know, some people are like, oh, let me sort out myself. No, no, no. Don't sort out each other. So don't sort out yourself, right? Sort out the city. Just sort out your company. Go into the company and say, what is the strategy of this company? Some of you need to take on your corporations now. Ask big questions. Ask important questions in the place where you work. Ask them, where is this organization going to? What is our plan? Well, be wise. Know the organization you work for. Do you guys understand this? There comes a time when God begins to pass on the door the, the button of enterprise. And this is that time. This is that time. Let's jump over this and let's go finally to Isaiah 64. Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear Neither had the eyes seen, O oh God, beside thee, what you have prepared for those who wait for you. Those who wait on God. It's a preparation of something. You know, you may have your military uniform. You may have your gear for war. But you know that war comes from a secret place. For you to fire any weapon, it comes from a knowing. It comes from a secret power. And those who are 
commerce in war are the people who know something about their country, know something about why the war is necessary, something about who they believe in. So this is a picture of a soldier praying, praying, having a moment. Can you see how much, I, I, I can't, time for me to show you every, all the kits on his back. He was kitted with ammo. But guess what? He knows the strongest place is not him fighting the weapon. He's on his knees. Hallelujah. Those who wait on God. God prepares something special for them. So God wants to open the door of your city and your nation to you. This is the new Eco Atlantic City. This Eco Drive. We're waiting for people who are going to go and take over Eco Drive, Eco Boulevard. This Eco Boulevard in Eco Atlantic City. Who wants to take over Echo Boulevard? Who wants, who wants, who, who? Do you know, um, I, I, I honestly feel like we should raise our sights as, as, as people of God. We're always so weak. Like, we're looking for a place to do video we couldn't find. I'm like, where are these church people? And the pastor will say, oh, no, no. We don't, our treasure's in heaven. But you need prayer meeting place now. We can't do retreat because we can't afford it. Pastors are afraid to cooperate with other pastors because they feel like their, their budget for the, for the month will not be met. Let's talk openly. You know, like me, I don't have shame. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot shame the shameless. <laughs> you cannot shame the shameless. That's why pastors don't cooperate because they fear that they, they will not meet their budget. Like if we gave all our money away of last week to people of influence, how are we going to pay for our rent for the month when we give away one month for free, one week for free? That's why pastors also cannot stop doing services on Sundays because it's on Sunday they collect the offering. So people cannot obey God because people are not stepping into spiritual power. How about someone saying, God, I want to deal with you. I know this, the budget for this hotel is $2 million every month. I'll pay it. Let the church worry about ministry. Let them meet or partner or do anything. You, 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 you lose in the church. You liberate the church to do the work of, the, of God. Can God trust you to partner with him? Can God give you the city? Can God trust you to take on a city? Can, can, can God trust you beyond, beyond the money? Or once you get a little few millions inside your hand, you think like the past, these pastors talk too much. Pastor, pastor come to my house. Come and collect a... Uh, pastor, can I, can I invite you to dinner? Do you think like I'm hungry, really? I can't, walk, I can't walk to eat dinner. I'm a cafe buff. I don't even need money to do cafes. I don't even eat food. I don't eat food. So you cannot tempt me with pounded jam. I don't eat it. I don't really like any food at all. There's no food I like so much. I don't like anyone. I eat to survive. I want to say tea. <laughs> you see, very cheap. Tea bag is how much? I'm cheap. It's not about expensive. It's actually like the person you cannot say, uh, hey. I just got in my car, I have tea bags. If I come to your house, I just, you have hot water. That's all I do. <laughs> I'm cheap. But God is looking for people who are beyond money. Beyond money. Vion, are you hearing me? Vion, you need to you need to rise up, man. Vion, I need a billion from you, man. Vion, go for it. What are you waiting for? Do you guys understand? Let me start calling names now. Guys, raise your sights. The kingdom belongs to God. And the people who will build it are people who are who know that there's an open door for them to take the city. This is a co-Atlantic city. I, Moses, I will build two towers inside. I will start by being a contractor to the people who are building right now. I have two already. The contractors to me, personally, in my personal business. And guess what? I will build towers there. If you'd like, just be sec circumvent. Like, guess what? God wants you to be wealthy. God wants you to have resources. You know, for what we want to do, I want many children to be in school. Look at what Destiny Trust is doing. Imagine if we can do 20 Destiny Trust homes. They've, they've fine-tuned the model. They know how much money each child needs 
to eat every day. They know. Do you understand? Imagine if we can double that model. Why are we not doing it? We can't. So do you think God is delighted that we are inca incapable of growing beyond this point? No, God is waiting for you to rise up and say, God, I'm ready. I'll partner with you. Not when tight come to your hand. When it's 1,000, it's easy. When it, like somebody was giving a testimony last week and said that, like, do you understand? When it's $20,000, uh, now start saying like i used to give my money to missionaries so and distribute my tithe all over the place i don't know what the church the church doesn't really need you're not all of a sudden wise because your tithe is plenty think about it enable us to do the work enable us to build the kingdom for god you guys understand this take on the city debunk debunk so the thing is, when we come to the city building, right? The, the builders debunk intercession. They don't know that as the pastor needs to pray to preach, you also need to pray to build. Do you guys understand? As the pastor needs to pray to preach, Ibim needs to pray to to hold up the towers he's building. Do you understand? But also intercessors refuse to ally with rebuilders. I think Sandra is working for a canal man. I cannot be aligning myself with her. So guess what? She's in the city. I am an intercessor. Guess what we're supposed to do? Hold hands and build together. It should be a partnership, an allyship between the intercessors and the rebuilders. Both of them need to pray with each other. You guys understand this? We're rounding up, so don't die of AC and just endure. See, I'm even sweating. Can I tell you guys something? God wants a different mind shift. We want to do church. We want to come to a place where the atmosphere is nice and all of it. God is looking for men and women. God is looking for men and women. We want, we like the place where we are comfortable, where we know that God wants to break you out and make you a city. And this is not the gospel of prosperity. I hope you know I'm not that person. I'm not that person. It's not the gospel of prosperity. God intends to have an allyship with his sons who can build the kingdom hallelujah so let's round up here god has opened a door in front of you isaiah chapter 22 verse 22 i will place upon his shoulders the key to the treasures of david's palace he will open doors that no one can shut and he will shut doors that no one can open. I will place upon his shoulders the key to the treasures of David's palace. He will open doors that no one can shut. And he will shut doors that no one can open. Isaiah 22 verse 22. Let's go on to Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. I'm sure when you saw the topic, this is actually what came to your mind. Revelation 3 7 is what, 3 8 is what came to your mind. Write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Philadelphia. For these are the solemn words of the Holy One, the true one, who has David's keys, who open doors that no one can shut and closes the doors that no one can open. Do you know this quote was from Isaiah 22, 22. God opens doors that no one can shut. Pastor Zena, God opened doors that no one can shut and shuts doors that no one. I know all that you've done. Not our transitions, I know your works. Now I've set before you a wide open door that none can shut. For I know that you possess only a little strength, yet you've kept my word and not denied my name. Amen. So I'm opening before you a door. 
because you've passionately kept my message of perseverance i will keep you in the hour of testing that is coming to test every person on earth every person on earth will be tested will be tested there's an hour of testing come upon everyone that only those who keep the word of god will be kept in the hour of testing and those who god has opened before them an open door those who God has opened before them, an open door. You have an open door to the enterprise. You have an open door to prosperity. You have an open door to ministry. Say amen. You have an open door to the supernatural, to the work of God, to the presence of God, to divine life. You have an open door. You have an open door. I want someone to make this a confession. I have an open door. I say, I have an open door to the Spirit. I have an open door to the Spirit. So I pray in new tongues. I declare new things. I speak new mysteries. I have an open door into the dwelling place of my God. I have an open door into a new call. Into a new call in ministry. God has given me life. I have an open door and it cannot be shut. I have a door, an effectual door open before me. In the midst of adversaries, I press forward. In the midst of difficulties, I keep on going on. I I have an open door before me. I have an open door to wealth, to resources in God. I have an open door to businesses, to new ideas. I have an open door to the treasures of David. And no man can close these things. I have an open door to generational transfer. I have an open door to new vistas of life. I have an open door to wealth and treasures. I have an open door to greatness. I have an open door to the grace of God. I have an open door to divine life and power. I step beyond this level and I press in into God. I press into the life in God. I have an open door. Lift up your hands this morning and say, I have an open door. I have an open door. Pray it. Make it a prayer. Say, Lord, thank you for the open door. Thank you for the open door. Thank you for the open door. Thank you for the open opportunity. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. And your door is open to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, oh God. Pastor Ahide, please come and pray for the people. Just pray this word over the people. Monde stop the staparas de brende pata de pacatana. Prevetes de vegeding stafas de vash. Minde katas, ning resto firende padano stavata. Erevrotopona mora fratai of the god of God. Thank you, Father. You must understand that what is born of flesh is flesh. But what is born of the spirit is spirit. Stand up on your feet. There is no instruction that you are given this morning that will mean anything beyond the state of your heart. There is no word that you hear today that will mean anything beyond what you intend for it to mean. There is no bead of sweat that comes out on your pastor's forehead that will mean anything beyond what you intend for it to mean. If the words that he has spoken, he has spoken by God, each one of them will come to pass. The difference will be that if you align yourself with it, you will be a partaker of it. If you do not align yourself with it, you will not see it. You will not see it. Lift up your hands and let us pray. Fix your eyes on him. Believe that as I lift up my voice, that the words that I will speak will be inspired by the Lord. And let those words fall upon you like rain. Imagine as your hands are lifted right now with the spirit, clouds are gathering. Bright clouds of God's anointing. And as we begin to pray, these clouds will begin to drop inspiration upon your face. It will clear away doubts. 
it will clear away confusion it will clear away distraction your weakness will not matter anymore all that will matter will be the power of God that is coming upon you like rain like rain like rain oh satana brondita for us fredena nisa nivra tiger lin loto foto son of logona in venice in venice father we stand the kenevro gold under the shower of your inspiration even the fruit of logona under the shower of your anointing under the shower of your endowment under the shower of your power he bring the fruit of foto son of logona beyond our desire for you is your desire for us give us your eyes to see the things you see give us your heart to perceive the things you perceive let our love abound yet more and more in all judgment and discernment help us to approve those things that are excellent we, re we receive those things that are excellent we receive them of you right now by your spirit we receive it we receive it fix your eyes on him and receive it receive it like a hungry child receives milk from his mother's breast receive it like a starving man receives his first meal receive it like there's nothing else that is important in this life receive it like it's the very breath of life that without the will and the power and the anointing of god to take you forward you will not make it till tonight you will not wake up from your sleep tonight let it be the very life and the thing that you desire to keep on living receive it of him receive it of him receive it of him receive it of him thank you father this is the glory that you desire that your sons, that your children would manifest your glory. This is the glory that you did. This is the splendor that you display. That man would manifest God. We worship you because you are worthy. We put our hands together for the Lord today. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate the Word of God. Let's celebrate the Word of God in this house today. Hallelujah. 